Welcome my friends! I'm so excited because in this video we get to talk about the geometric mean and average growth rates. So this is going to be a more appropriate method to find the mean when we have things like growth rates or returns on stocks or anything along that nature. So let's go ahead and get started. Alright, so let's first start out by talking about the geometric mean for rates of return and growth rates. And to uh, kind of give you a motivating example here, let's just say that you own a stock that is worth $100. And then, you know, uh, time is going to pass and this stock is going to change in price. And let's say after one year, this stock has increased by 50%. And that has brought the value to, well, 100 times 1.5, which is $150. But then year two comes around and it doesn't do quite as well. It actually decreases by 40%. So to figure out the new value, you can basically take, you know, 100% minus 40%, you get 60% or 0.6. You can take your value of 150 and multiply it by 0.6 and you'd be down to $90. So if you were to calculate the arithmetic mean rate of return, then you would just be adding up those two returns, which are 50% and 40%, or I guess adding 50 and negative 0.4 and dividing by two, you would get positive 0.1 divided by 2, which is 0.05. So based on the arithmetic mean, we would be saying that the average rate of return is positive 5%. But the stock is worth less than what it was purchased for. We bought this thing for $100, and now it's worth only $90. So how could the average return be positive? Clearly, something has gone wrong here. And the problem is, we are using the wrong type of average. When dealing with growth rates, or rates of return, we really should be using the geometric mean. So here is the formula for the geometric mean. First of all, remember the arithmetic mean takes all the values and adds them together and then divides by how many values that you have. On the other hand, the geometric mean tells us to take one plus each of our growth rates or rates of return, multiply them all together, and then take the nth root. At the very end, we also have to not forget to subtract one. N is the total number of values or your sample size, and x is going to represent each value or rate of return or growth rate. Let's apply this formula to our situation. So we had a return of 50% represented by 0.5 and negative 0.4. So our value for n is going to be 2. So that means we have to take the second root or the square root of 1 plus each of those rates multiplied by each other. So we have 1 plus 0.5 times 1 plus negative 0.4 and then we have to subtract 1 at the end. This will get us the square root of 1.5 times 0.6 minus 1. We don't really have to write the 2 because the square root is kind of implied if we don't write a number. If we type this into our calculator, we will get negative 0.0513. Let me show you how you could do this on your calculator. Now, since this root could be the square root or the third root or the fourth root or any root, uh, I'm going to show you how to do this in general rather than just using the square root. Although in this case, we could just press second and then the square root to uh, kind of get this result. But in general, if you want to find any other kind of root, you could press the number of the root, which in this case is 2, go and press the math key, and then go on to option 5, which is kind of the x root, whatever value root that you would like to have. And then you'll see that we have the square root, which you could have just gotten in this case by pressing second and square root. Then we can type in the numbers, 1.5 times 0.6, arrow outside of our square root, and subtract 1, and we will get the answer of negative 0.0513. Alternatively, we could also have taken the 1 half power. You may remember that square roots or any roots are just fractional powers. So instead of doing uh, the square root here, we could have typed in parentheses 1.5 times 0.6, close parentheses, raised to the 1 half power. Because we had a square root, it would be the 1 half power. If it was the third root, it'd be the one third power, or fourth root, one fourth power, etc. right? And then we can subtract one, and we will get the same answer. So this means that in this case, our average growth rate is about negative 5.13%. This is the rate that $100 could grow at for two years to reach $90. So if you had $100 and you had a negative 5.13% return in year one, and another negative 5.13% return in year two, you would have $90 after two years. Here's another example. Suppose an investment had the returns 5%, 17%, 24%, 11%, and 9%. What is the average return? 
Well, since we have rates of returns, we should be using the geometric mean. Note that in this case, we have five different returns, so our value for n in the formula is going to be 5. To find the geometric mean, we can just plug into the formula. We have the fifth root of 1 plus each of those returns. I'm putting the negative return in parentheses just to make sure that I have it correct. This will simplify to the fifth root of all of these values multiplied together, minus 1. Let's practice typing this into our calculator. Let me make this a little bit smaller so we can see all of the information. So I'll do it in both ways. One way by typing in the fifth root, and then secondly doing the one-fifth power. So to do the fifth root, I'm going to type in 5, math, option 5, and then I'm going to type in everything that I see there. 1.05 times 1.17 times 1.24 times 0 0.89, times 1.09, arrow out, minus 1, and I'm going to get 0.0812 or so. So this tells us that the average rate of return is 8.12% per period. So that means that if we would have gotten 8.12% return per period, instead of all these returns, we would still be left with the same amount of money. Now, alternatively, we could do this with the one-fifth power. So if we did uh, 1.05 times 1.17 times 1.24 times 0 0.89 times 1.09, since we had five returns, our n was five, instead of taking the fifth root, we could raise this to the one-fifth power, and then we could subtract one, and we would get the exact same answer. What if we want to know the average growth rate based on an investment's beginning and ending balance, such as a stock? Well, then we can use the average growth rate formula. This would be the case where we know an investment's beginning balance, an investment's ending balance, and we know how many periods are between the beginning and ending balance. We would take the nth root of the ending balance divided by the beginning balance minus 1, where n represents the number of periods, which could be either months or years or whatever you have. Note that in this case, n is representing the number of periods, whereas with the geometric mean, n represented the number of values that you had. Suppose that you purchased GameStop stock for $43.03 on January 21st, 2021, and sold the stock for $347.51 on January 27th, 2021. Find the average daily return. So you may or may not be familiar with the background related to this example, but basically in early 2021, uh, a number of hedge funds were shorting the GameStop stock because they believed that it, they were going to go out of business and the stock was going to go down. So a lot of people on Reddit kind of formed together and they said, let's just buy as much GameStop stock as we can. And as you can see, it went up kind of uh, massively in this kind of like one week period right, for all the way from $43 up to over $347. So let's say you bought it at, you know, this price and you sold it, uh, you know, six days later, uh, what would your average return per day have been? So we're trying to find the average return per day, and we have six days between January 21st and January 27th. So we're going to use a value of uh, n equals six in our formula. Therefore, if we want to find our average growth rate, we can take the sixth root of the ending period balance divided by the beginning period balance minus one. Uh, so let's grab our calculator and let's type that in. So if I kind of make this a little smaller here so we can, yeah, maybe we'll make it on this side. So once again, you can either, either use the sixth root or you can use the one sixth power. I'm gonna use the one sixth power. So that's gonna be 347.51 divided by 43.03. .03. And I'm gonna raise that to the one divided by six power and then I need to subtract uh, 1 at the end, and you will see here that I get 0.4164, which is 41.64% uh, return. Uh, and that is per day, which is ridiculously good, right? Uh, so you'd be very lucky, lucky to get an investment return, you know, 15% in a year. And uh, if you would have bought GameStop stock and held it for these six days, you could have gotten 41.64% return per day. Um, so I would just also want to note here that if you had uh, all the individual returns per day and you calculated the geometric mean for that, uh, you would also get the same thing, the 41.64%. Now you may be wondering what the GameStop stock is worth today. So I've just pulled this up 
and it looks like it is only worth $10.77 today. I can go back and look five years, and you can see um, that major spike there. And I actually can't even see the, the grand maximum there, but it does actually get higher than what it kind of appears to see here. Momentarily there, it did actually reach $347, but this graph looks like it's only showing like $81. Um, but it has been steadily, uh, you know, decreasing from there. And today it is only worth $10.77. This is uh, April 13th of 2024 when I'm recording this video. All right, so here we have a couple examples for you to try. We have the revenue growth over the last several years for this company. Uh, so you're asked to find the geometric mean. And then we have the same company, which has the profit per year. Uh, we have the ending value and then we have the beginning value. So in this one, you're asked to find the average profit growth rate. Uh, so go ahead and give those a shot. And I think that's all I have to talk about in this video. So hopefully you found it useful and I will see you in the next one. Welcome my friends. I'm so excited because in this video, we get to talk about...